And welcome again. Here we are at Quick Fix Golf. Here's your host, Bobby Lopez, uh, PGA Pro, because I couldn't think of anything else to do. <laughs> and we're going to have a little fun tonight. We have our whole regular gang that gets on, and uh, you can always join us at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. All you need to do is go to quickfixgolf.com and then look under Lessons. Click on that. The menu will come down, and one of them that will say Golf Webinars. We're actually going to change that to be considered a golf online class. We think that might sound better. And now, if you actually learn something, that might even be, be better yet. But the topic this evening is um, the takeaway. You know, like Nicholas used to always say, the first 18 inches are critical. And oh, I see that can. so much. And here's the part that that scares me about when, when guys are working on their swing, because that's all I do all day long, trying to help people with their swings. It's that if they don't realize they have this problem in the first 18 inches, and they don't... You know, what what happens usually is they'll skip over something until it's really, really ingrained properly. Like I always say, don't put the second floor on until the cement dries on the first floor. So they'll they'll will address it and then, then they're so worried about what their position at the top is or what their downswing sequence is or this, that and the other, that they don't realize that hey, you need to uh make sure that you have those first eighteen inches right. And I'll give you as an example. I'll give you as an example. Here is, I told one of our students at one time, this is a long time ago. Nick Price was still playing then. That's how long ago it was. And here's Nick Price. And I told him, I said, sometimes pros go to a lesson and they might, uh, I don't have them down line. Darn it, I wanted to have them down line on this. But he said, I said, they might go a, a half an hour or an hour or even more without even hitting a ball, just working on setup or just working on the first, you know, the first foot of the takeaway. And he said, ah, oh, you're so full of crap. I said, no, I'm telling you, I mean, you couldn't do it with, you know, the regular um, golf lesson format. You know, you got, I, I, I do ours at 45 minutes rather than half an hour. Most places are half an hour. I think that's just too short. With my big mouth for sure is too short. But you do 45 minutes, by the time you do the video, playback, and all the other kind of stuff that goes with it, and we got to do the whole lesson in that 45 minutes. They come in and they go, hey, what do I have, morning or afternoon? You know, and they're going to spend three or four hours. But, you know, they're in the business. It's different. But he, he, the long story short here, eventually, the guy went to the Masters that I told this to. And he came back from the Masters and he said, damn, Lopez, you were right. I said, of course I was right. You think I made this up? It, this is how it goes. And he said he went down and he saw Nick Price at the end of the range with David Ledbetter. And he went all the way down. They wanted to watch what they did. And he said he got fed up after 30 minutes and he left because they didn't hit one ball. And all they did was David Ledbetter, he said, was standing basically over here. Of course, he's taller than Nick Price. So he was standing over here. <laughs> and Nick Price would take the club back and stop right there. And Ledbetter would grab the club head and either turn it a little bit and say, no, right here. No, right here. No, right there. Turn it a little bit. And they were trying to get that club to go to the exact same spot every time. And he said they were doing that for who knows how long. Is it after half an hour he got fed up and left? Now, to get to get the average golfer to, to do that, it would be hard. And number one, you're playing for fun. I mean, you're not trying to win the Masters. So, uh, But still, the only way I see that the regular guy can benefit from that we just talked about is that if they'll do drills at home, if you're fed up um, with what's on TV or whatever, and you say, hey, I'm going to go in the, in the room and just do those first. You can do that without knocking down any lamps or anything and just get those first couple inches by. Because why? Because if you screw that thing up right here, see, once you put yourself in the wrong place there, now you're worried about all these other things in your golf swing, and it's for nothing. Because you're already toast. Now, it doesn't mean you can't recover. You can recover, but you're going to have to recover, and you really <laughs> excuse me, should know what that recovery is. But let me show you the difference. You look, here's this young man right here. And then we come over here and we look at McElroy. Was he just won last week or so? And here's McElroy. And you look at what he's going to do. Okay, so his first 18 inches right there, or so whatever you want to call it, is absolutely dead solid perfect. 
So that means that he hasn't screwed it up yet. You know, if you don't get a good shot, you somehow screwed it up between where you started and where you ended up at impact. Because impact is basically the same as the address position except for th a little three degrees higher in the hands and three degrees closed in the, in the club face. So you're just basically, it's like t-ball, playing t-ball. You're just trying to put the club right back where you started. So when you look over here to the left and this, whoops, uh-oh, number one, look at the club face. Look at the crease in his hand. See? Here you got a toe up, even with the crease of the hand. Even if you come over here and we look at you-know-who, back in his prime, we knew what the heck he was doing. And you'll see the same thing, those first 18 inches. And I'm going to show you how to do this, by the way. See that? See that? Do you know what he did? Nothing. This is like the Jerry Seinfeld Golf Academy here. This is a backswing about nothing. <laughs> the trick is to do nothing. He did something, this guy right here on the left. Now watch, I'm going to show you another one that did something. Watch this. He did, I'm not going to give names here to predict it. See, he's done. It's done. It's over. Caput. Se acabo. Ya no mas. It's over. Because he's rolled that club open and taken it inside. It doesn't mean he can't find a way to set. Oh, see that? So he did something. Now let me show you somebody doing absolutely nothing. Here I am with the stick, and what am I going to do? I'm turning my chest, but I'm not using my hands at all. The hands are the ones that can get you in the biggest problem because they move a lot. So if you're Italian, you got a problem. <laughs> it's a joke. All right, let me go. Look, you see? Now, let's look over here. I'm going to show you another one that somebody did something. Well, this, 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 we're going to go through that in a second. That's Steve Klein. He, and I'm going to show you what we did to help him. I'm going to show you what we did to help him. Now, here's one. This is, I affectionately call this, affectionately call this guy Tuggy. He's been with me for a while. And he's working on some other things. And then all of a sudden this pops up. I call him Tuggy because he's on a tugboat right this minute. He works on a tugboat. And... Watch what he's going to do. Whoops. Now I got the line in the wrong place. Watch what he's going to do. He's going to roll and lift. Look how his hands came off the line. And look how the club head is behind his hands. We go back and look at Monsieur Tiger. And you'll see that he keeps everything Right on the plane. Look at that. The hands, the club head, everything. Hmm. Now, Tuggy right here on the left, he's going to have a problem. He gets up to the top. He actually halfway fixes it. And when he comes down, let's see that club face. It's still a little too inside out. But he squared it up some. It should have been wide open. He squared it up some. Let me show you another one. Watch this. Let me, let me make it a little closer and draw a line. And draw a line. Let's see here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Right there looks good. Hey, that looks pretty good. Now watch. Eh, look at that elbow. And what does the elbow do? Look what it caused. Look at his club face. It's wide, wide, wide open. Because on his takeaway, back, back. Back. Uh oh, it's already starting. See, see those elbows try to separate from each other. See that? And when those sep elbows separate, that's why they sell those things that you can. They, they got one thing that's like a ball that has little indentations on the side. They sell that. And then there's you know straps you can buy to get those. That's what. That's why they sell that stuff. See, here Tiger is keeping his elbows together. Hmm. All right. Now. I'm going to open this microphones up now. See if this makes any sense to everybody. Come on, open up. There we go. Okay. Now, attendees. All right. Anybody got a comment so far? Does any of this make sense to you? Yes. Okay. Now, here's... here's... 
Go ahead. The whole point is to try to deliver the club where you started from, and, and what you're talking about really kind of enhances those possibilities. Well, here's what you got to do. You need to have a means, unless you want me to move in, which you don't want, trust me. Um, you don't want to have to cook Cuban food. Smell up the whole neighborhood. So <laughs> it's a joke. Anyway, here we go. I'm offended. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> if I looked in the mirror and saw you, I'd be offended too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, you need some point of reference. So if you have even just this stick on the ground, even if it's in your in your bathroom, wherever you go, in the backyard, whatever, it doesn't have to be at a golf course. And you turn, <laughs> you turn. What are you laughing for? What's it? You think this is funny? Wherever you go on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> what can I tell you? So anyway, if you got the <laughs> behind the tree. Don't get me laughing. <laughs> Don't let me start laughing. Oh, my yeah. old. We got to go back to the doctor for more medication. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Now watch. My chest is going to turn. But my arms did nothing. It is a swing about nothing. The whole trick is, can you do as little as possible on the backswing? I know Jim Furyk. There's always those outliers. But Jim Furyk's spine angle is magnificent. It's perfect the way he is. And the way he manages himself is unbelievable. And it's what he does is probably natural to him. And that's something you could look at if you say, well, wait a minute. What if I'm Jim Furyk? Well, you better have this right. Let me show you. Look at this. You see this spine angle? Watch this. Watch this. I mean, you can't do it better than that. And because he maintains that 90-degree relationship with the path to his spine, he's so consistent. So the arms going up and around is just a distraction. And when he takes it back, see this? Look, look. It's not as bad as you think. He gets to here, and it's looking pretty darn good. Then what does he do? Fourth floor, straight up. And I'd rather have that than the other way. I'd rather have that every day of the week and twice on Sunday than I would to have this behind me where my elbow gets stuck and behind me. See that? Then that face is open. Then he comes across. And then what does he do? To salvage it, he smacks it with his right hand. Watch what's going to happen. He takes, oops, slow down, slow down. Take the club back. He's going to roll it somewhat open. And then, see, he slides, slides, smacks it with his right hand right there. He has to. If he didn't smack it with that right hand, he's done. Everything's going to go out the right field. And if his timing's on, it's okay. But when his timing's off, he's in trouble. So then from here, once I get to that point, you say, what do I do now? I would do this about 15 billion times. Somebody's eating popcorn in the background or something here. And I would do this about 15 billion times. Boom. Make sure I'm in the same place every time. I just keep doing it and keep doing it, keep doing it to where. In, in reality, for me, it's get it back to first 18 inches and the rest is a blur, which was exactly what I was telling Gene Sowers when he wanted to open that time. I said, hey, man, just get it started. The first 18 inches perfect and the rest is a blur. Just hang on for dear life. Just let it rip. Of course, he, he's, you know, an accomplished, very, very, very accomplished golfer. So that makes, you know, he doesn't got it. He had not have a lot of the swing problems or a lot of problems with his path getting it up to the top. So he can think that way. But you want to eventually end up that way. We just think about the first 18 inches, I just start here. And once I get there, I hinge up it goes, and I just hang on for dear life. And that club should be right there. There are those that would argue that the club should be right there. And, and I'm okay with that, too. It's, it could be above and parallel, 
which I'll show you what that looks like. And there's nothing wrong with that, quite frankly. But if you look at all, uh, where is he? Uh, we all can't wait to see Grant Wait. Where'd he go? There he is. See, he would be above and parallel. See, his left arm and his shaft. See, his shaft is this way. And it eventually melts down to the ball. See, now it's there, then 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 it's there. And like I said, he's about three degrees high and three degrees close. And look how much that shaft bows. That's why it's three degrees high, was to get the club back, which is why when you start off, the toe of the club should be up a little bit. Not The club isn't flat on the ground at a dress. Hmm. That, because that club is going to droop. It's going to droop down. That's interesting. Did you know that? You know it no. now? The club yeah. droops. There's forces you, on it. Anybody got a question? <laughs> Open the mic back up. Who's got a question? I do. Go ahead. Uh, this is old goat. So what you were talking about, it. so if you laid the sole of your club flat on the ground, um, what does what what happens? Well, you got to understand also, what only thing that matters is impact. So uh, generally one of the problems is that I look for, if somebody sets the club flat on the ground, their hands are a little higher than they should be, and it, that makes them prone to taking the club back inside the path. That's one thing. Uh, number two is they may think that's how the club should be, but when they swing, they don't realize that that's not how it goes. I mean, it's generally about three degrees of bow. I mean, that's dream world. Um, but if you have your shafts are too stiff for you, you won't get enough bowing. So then here's, 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 the, reason I'm, here's the reason I'm asking that. Cause I do, I lay my soul flat on the ground and I'm getting an awful lot of of strikes on the on the heel could could that be a problem no you could be getting when you're talking about strikes on the heel you're talking about the ground or the ball the ball on the club face all my all, everything is 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 coming in on the not everything but are, i, are I have a tendency to, uh, huh are you shanking it is that what you're telling me uh i'm not really shanking it i'm, I'm it's just it's near it the doesn't heel. feel good I'm not, I'm not getting that click I'm I'm not I'm not hitting on the center. I'm hitting from the center into the into into the heel, right well, in that area. Right usually, here. what I see a lot of that too is that somebody sort of surging into the ball with their body a little bit, and that moves the whole path outward. There, well, that could be it. I have a tendency to do that. You know, because yeah. everybody wants to transfer their weight to their left foot, but that's not how it goes. Most of the weight's on the right foot at impact. Right, right. See, that's what a lot of people. Um, I hear this all the time. They go, oh, no, you're kidding. You're supposed to transfer your weight to your left side. I said, no, that ain't how it goes. Watch. I'll show you. Here's a real good example. See? Now watch what she's going to do. Watch. Maybe we're going to draw a line right here. She's going to go back. Look at that left hand grip. Very strong. See the club face is pointed straight up in the air, so it's strong. Now watch this. See, her hips turn, and look at where the weight is. The her left foot is practically airborne. All the pressure and weight is right there on that right toe, on the ball of the right foot. That's where it is. You could do the same thing with Justin Thomas. Where do you go? Come here. Hey, Justin, get over here. You're not busy. Come over here. Here you go. Here he goes. Now watch. You're going to see the same stinking thing. Oops, come on, Lopez, not so fast, it goes too quick. Here, 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 here. See his left foot? It's coming right off the ground. Right off the ground. All the weight's on this right toe. Champ, same thing. So you might be surging towards your left side and... and getting a little bit of ahead of it, and that, that'll move it to the heel. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody? I have one. <clears throat> when do you uh, hinge your right wrist on your takeaway? You do the first 18 inches in one piece. At what point, Bobby, do you uh, hinge that right wrist back? Good question. Here it is right here. 
Here it is right here. Right there, I have no hands. Then, right there, which I would call 2 o'clock. The ball's 12 o'clock. I turn my okay. chest to 2 o'clock. See, all that's one piece. Now, watch. I hinge. See the head club heads outside my hands? See? I hinge right there. I hinge and lift right on that same angle. Okay. Oh, you a big thank you, Jose. I'm sorry I haven't called you. I wanted to call you. Glad you're here. Here we go. See that? That's really. But if I don't get those first 18 inches right, you know, and and I and I see so much people going like overturning in the body real hard because they're thinking the more they turn, the more you know, zippity doo dah they're going to get on the ball. That's not necessarily true. Can people say that we well, got to transfer your weight and, and your hips? Well, let's look at uh, Ricky Fowler. He doesn't even have any hips. And he weighs, what, 150 pounds soaking wet? See where his head is? See where his shoulder is? Now watch. The speed is coming from here to there. From here to there. From here, right there, right here. He's just roof. That's where the speed's coming from. And it's lightning fast. It's not his hips. The hips can help. They're icing, but not cake. Any other questions? And let's look at him. Hold on, hold on. Watch this. Here's a good one. This, this, this is old. This is old. And he doesn't do this anymore. He's gotten rid of something because this was a little bit excessive. He's gotten rid of something. But watch what he does on this takeaway. You talk about somebody that was very, very careful about his takeaway. Watch this. See that? What did he do? Nothing. Nothing. No hands. Look, Ma, no hands. Remember that commercial? You can remember that one, Paul. I know you're old enough for that one. Oh, yeah. See? You have Michelle Wink. Michelle Wee has an interesting takeaway. Well, let's find out. Hold on. Let's I see. Think. Where'd she go? Let me see. I got her here somewhere. She's changed back and forth over the years. I've got her here somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't. Wait a minute. We. I know I had her here. Here you go. We. Let's see where her weight transfers to. Look at this. Boy, no wonder she's having trouble. See, right here, she's right on top of it. And she's got to fight the pitch off right there. Now, what we don't know is she's got an iron in her hand. It's probably a par three. And she might be into a really strong wind. So she's deliberately getting on top of the golf ball and trying to trap it to keep it low into the wind. That might be her strategy. So... We, you know, I, I don't want to criticize it too much because that might be what she's trying to do. Paul, you got her on speed dial. Why don't you give her a call and find out what? Hey, we. You know, in China, you know why they don't have any telephones in China? No. There's so many wings and wongs, they're afraid they're going to wing the wong number. <laughs> Any other questions? Wing, wing. <laughs> All right, so I would recommend this that anybody get yourself a couple sticks. Go to Home Depot. Don't go to a golf shop. You just go right in the same department where they have signs, for, like for rent. They're usually there. They're actually called, well, they're nicknamed snow poles, but they're for marking your driveway. See, and just do this until you're sick of it. Make sure no hand movement, and it stays right on the line. Do you have a stick behind you, Bobby? Or No, I have a stick on the yes. golf club. Okay. See? My hands stay on that line and everything. The same way. Here's Tiger doing the same thing.
You'll see it right here. Le Monsieur Tiger. <laughs> There's Tiger. Here's McElroy. Where'd he go? Here's Sergio. I'm glad I'm not a bullfighter Garcia. It's the same thing. Then he'll hinge. When he gets here, you ready? Hinge. All right, there he goes. He hinges the hands and up he goes. Gabish. Any other questions? That's good. All right, hopefully you learned something tonight. Yeah, that's good. I did. I did. Get busy with this drill, and of course, what you want to do, do the drill, send me a video of you doing the drill. You know, get out your camera, and until you can get in for a lesson or whatever, you just get out your camera and get a video of yourself. In fact, I'll tell you what else uh, Darren found, this little attachment to put on a stick that's only six bucks or something to, to put your phone on so that you can videotape yourself at the right angle and everything. I'll get that information from Darren and email it out to everybody. Or else maybe I'll get a bunch of them and sell them for 20 bucks a piece. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, capitalism. I'm only kidding. Hey. All right. Hey, check, check my email, Bob. You keep on sending me two messages. Okay, I'll check your email. Okay. All right, gang. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, Thanks Bobby. Bobby.